Then you get into Southland Frank and Hanover Hanover. Now we're seeing like some, you know, again, you had all time greats, but now we're getting into even more all time greats. You're like, man, you're just spitting out all, like you're starting to see your legacy now when we say, hey, who did Yannick drive? It's like, man, check, 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 yeah. check, check, you know? Um, was Hanalore Hanover, like she was supposed to be mission brief, but she, would she get hurt at two or, or she just didn't race at two? Like what happened with her at two and three? Cause she was the same age as mission brief. Yeah, yeah, she, um, as a two year old, I guess she trained, I, no, I'd never really sat behind her cause she was Indiana bred, but uh, she raced a couple of times, but, and then she was, she got sore and they couldn't figure out what the problem was. So they turned her out. And then um, now she came back as a three-year-old and um, no, stayed in Indiana the whole year. So like you've never really seen her. But the funny story is that um, when she came back as a four-year-old, it was the same year that um, obviously Mission Brief was a four-year-old and then Maven was coming back from Europe. And then Jimmy had bought her. And um, so like a lot of people were like, no, who are you gonna drive? Are you gonna drive Mission Brief or are you gonna drive Maven? All went along, mm -hmm. people were asking me. Like, and I was like, across that bridge when I get there. You yeah. Know, I really didn't know because like one was coming back from Europe, the other one like mission brief was a little sore. So God knows what's going to happen. Right. right. So like I didn't want to answer anybody and neither one of them ever qualified. <laughs> right. Neither <laughs> one of them made it to the races. And that's when the year I picked up Hannah Laura as a four year old. You know what I mean? Just like there was the luck I had at that time. You know what I mean? Everything kind of worked itself out and um, I had, it was one great horse after another. Were you ever nervous about like, and I, the thing I like about Ronnie, he's not scared to race the horses in other divisions. He's, you know, he, he's, so whose idea was it to try to go in the open trot? You won the mare trot the year before. And then that whole year, it's like, you know what? We're coming home to her home to Indiana. Hey, we got to do Indiana proud and win the whole, win the main event, the open trot. Was that your idea? Was it Ronnie's idea? Who's, who's, who's dumb slash great idea was it? No, it was Ronnie, but I mean, uh, I don't remember if we talked about it or not, but it would, it would have been definitely his call one way or the other, but, the, but she was just flat out the best trotter out there. You know what I mean? Like mare or, 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 or horse, you know what I mean? Like, uh, she's just better than they were and, and she looked like a horse. I mean, she's so big and strong and. Um, I had all the confidence in the world that she was going to get the job done. That was, uh, she ended up sitting a two hole in that race again, mud and just, yeah. it, it, it wasn't a good, it was a cold night. It was just, again, it sucks that some of these breeders crowns, you have these miserable nights, but she had a two hole to Mary Marauder who has come yeah. back as a nice open trotter, but you had all the confidence in the world that, you know, she was just better than, than that one. And for, to say that it's like, well, Marion's great, but this horse is just all time great. You know? Yeah, she was just, no, she was just better. I didn't really want to sit the tool behind no Mary Marauder or anybody. Like I would have really rather, you know, cut the mile, but uh, you know, Scotty kept, you know, kept coming and what are you going to do? Like if I park and we both go down, you know, yeah. so you got to go to plan B and uh, you know, he was definitely a good horse to follow anyway. You know, I, and there's a passing rail there in Indiana, even though I didn't use it, I, I went right. to the outside, but um, you know, they, uh, like I just figured like as long as she, she you no, know, I put her in play and she was, no, we didn't, no, reach at the top of the stretch, she was gonna get the job done. The Lone Lady versus the boys here in the uh, Breeders' Crown Open Trot sponsored by the Meadowlands. Here they come. And they're off and trotting. From the inside, Crazy Wow steps out for the lead. A resolve to the inside, and Hanalore Hanover forwardly placed here by Gingra. Mount Belindy gapping through in fourth to the outside of fifth. It's Marion Marauder. There between horses six, the headstrong homicide hunter. Back of the inside, trotting in seventh as they enter the first turn. It looks like a Chippendale Pinkman follows. Il Sonia Dream and Garel Hanover, the early trailers, 26 and 3. Opening quarter time, and Hanlor Hanover has cleared to the front, but immediate pressure there to the outside as they charge down the back stretch by Marion Marauder. So Marion Marauder clears to the lead. Hanlor Hanover to the inside, races second. Crazy Wild back to third, resolve is fourth. Mambolindi lined up in fifth. Homicide Hunter to the inside is now blocked sixth as looks like a Chippendale moves up and around. Pinkman follows. Il Sonia Dream and Garel Hanover. 55 and 3 for the halftime. Marion Marauder and Scott Zeron with the lead. Hanlor Hanover to the inside. She's locked in second as Resolve is out to challenge from third. Looks like a Chippendale working out a second over trip here is fourth. Crazy Wild buried on the inside fifth. Pinkman to the outer flow. 
Open Trotters arriving at three quarters. It's Marion Marauder, the lead is a length. And Hanalore Hanover beginning to look for racing room at three quarters, 125. They're on their way home of the Breeders' Crown with Marion Marauder. Hanalore Hanover angles to the outside, and here she comes. Down to the inside, Mambo Lindy. They've less than an eighth of a mile to go. Hanalore Hanover, Marion Marauder on the inside. Hanalore steps by. Hanalore Hanover takes a lead. Down to the inside, slipping through comes Crazy Wow. Hanalore Hanover wins the Breeders' Crown. Crown at 152 and 1. And then that year too, you had Ariana G and Manchego. Yeah. Ariana, you know, just like another bang bang, like wow, okay. And they ended up, uh, you know, like I don't even know who was more impressive than that because Manchego, she's a Philly trotter, mud everywhere, horses all over the place. And it's just like, you're just like, no, we're just gonna go out in the middle of the track and just, just pass by everybody and it's cool yeah. and no, no worries. Like, do you. Do you like having a horse that's easy to drive? Like that easy where you're just like, because do you lose, maybe intensity would be the right word. It's like, well, I've got the best horse and I need some sort of, so I'm not, get, I'm not caught sleeping. Whereas Manchego, it's like, yeah, I could just do whatever I want with her. I'll race her from behind and she'll just trot by everybody, no worries. Do you feel like having a horse like that maybe Brings your driving down? Because nah, I'll take the easy one. That's no yeah. problem. Yeah. And I, mean, I, I don't mind the, the hard one either. You know what I mean? It's, it is challenging, but the nice one to five shot that uh, can do it in each way. So yeah. They're nice too. Yeah, 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 it's okay. And, and yeah. same thing with Ariana G. Like, just she's coming, she had won at two, she's coming yeah. back at three. So at this point, you're a seasoned veteran of these horses coming back two to three. Mid stretch. Here they come. And they're off and trotting a good even start here. First away for the lead, it's checkmate time. Alongside Dream Together and from between horses over draft of Volo to the outside, it's Ariana G. Dream Baby Dream down to the inside fifth as Fine Tune Lady angles in sixth. Inside racing in seventh, Sunshine Delight. Racing eighth then, it's Ice Attraction as they race over to the first quarter mile marker, 27 and one tightly packed here. The early trailer as they make the turn, that's all money. Up front, battling for the lead here, it's Overdraft Volo. Overdraft Volo cannot clear checkmate time, who's gonna play a little hardball here. Meantime, Ariana G is sent on her way now as she throttles up going in for the lead. So there goes Ariana G and Jingra up to engage the leader over Draft Volo as they arrive at the halfway point, 55 and three. Ariana G has just now made the front. Overdraft of Olo to the inside, now racing in second and moving to the outside. Third comes Dream Together, down to the inside. Fourth, checkmate time. Moving fifth on the outside, it's Fine Tuned Lady. Dream Baby Dream is buried on the inside. Sunshine Delight using the outer flow here. Ice Attraction is ninth. Highland Top Hill. Dead last of the inside, rough gated there, looking for racing room as they trot to three quarters, 124 and four, they're in the stretch. And as they race for home, it's all Ariana G. She's out by four lengths. Overdraft Volo is the best of the rest then. And to the inside, as they move midway through the stretch, dream together, but it's Ariana G, Ariana G, five lengths to the good here. Ariana G, then it's dream together, and a charging lead on the outside comes Ice Attraction from far back back it's ariana g ariana g wins the breeders crown in 154 and three mid stretch here they come And they're off and trotting SMS Princess and Svonstead stepping right out quickly, grabbing the lead from the outside, challenging early as they step out past the stands. It's Lily Stride and moving up between horses there, it's Fetosev, Fetosev and Manchego as they trot three deep into the first turn. 
Racing over to the quarter mile marker and then Manchego on the inside has the advantage here on Fetosa, but they're too wide past the quarter in 27 and two. SMS Princess meantime takes back to third. A gap of two lengths fourth to Atlanta. Another two fifth on the outside. It's tough expectations. They're alongside Hay Blondie. Moving to the outside comes Jordan Blue Chip as they head down the back stretch. Then it's looking for Zelda and Seviorum is last in 10th. Now approaching the half and Fetosa has won the early skirmish here. Manchego there in the inside follows along in second. SMS Princess right there with the hunt in third. 55 and four was the halftime and Fetosa and Schmitzhammer leading the way to the upper turn. Manchego to the inside waiting in second. SMS Princess trots in third and here comes Lily Stride. Tim Tietrick on his way with her just off her back. It's top expectations. She's second over fifth. Atlanta buried to the inside. Jordan Blue Chip to the outer flow. Locked and shuffled Hey Blonde. They come to the top of the stretch and with the lead it's Fetosa but off her back now comes Manchego and the battle begins at three quarters at 126 and two. Fetosa by the inside. Manchego going right at the leader. Manchego puts a nose in front. Manchego clears a length. Fetosa back on the inside, trotting in second. SMS Princess out of the outside, a heart charging Seviorum. But as they come to the wire, it's Manchego, and Manchego will go undefeated. She's 12 for 12. Manchego wins the Breeders' Crown and won 54 and 4.